Hi, my name is Dennis and I am from Hooked on Wood. Today I want to show you my zero clearance insert. And my teaser was the best zero clearance insert. And it is not clickbait, it's true, and I'm going to prove it to you. So keep watching. A year ago I also uploaded a video about this insert and I call it the how version of the zero clearance insert. The how from Hooked on Wood. But it was my second video and I had less than 100 subscribers, so it stayed unnoticed for a long time. And in the meantime, I also got some comments on this video. Comments like, patent it and make money. I just learned how to correct the lack of flow in my dust collection system. Did you block the other holes in the saw cabinet, like around the blade elevation? Good question. Great idea. I definitely would like one in my shop. Do yourself plans. Great video. In the video, you didn't tell how to make the insert. So I had to make a new zero clues insert for myself. And I thought, well, this is the moment to grab the comments together and make a remake of this how insert video. If you have watched the old version, I think it's still interesting to watch this one because I dig a little bit deeper and show you the dimension of this zero clearance insert and how I made it. When I got a new table saw, I got a problem of underpowered dust extraction. So I needed to upgrade it. I ended up with a two horsepower dust extractor, a new and big cyclo. I increased the size of my duct system from four to six inch. I increased the inlet of my table saw from four to five inch. And I made all these efforts to increase my dust extraction system. And at the end, I was not completely satisfied with the results. So I began to think about a way to make it better. And I started to realize that my zero clearance insert kills all the airflow because your dust extractor can work as hard as it can. It can't extract more air and dust than the air it can extract. And as you can see, the gap is very narrow, especially when the saw blade is in it. So what you do is creating that your table saw becomes a big airtight cap on your duct system. Here I made a small model that's supposed to be a cabinet saw. What I want to show you is that if you carefully close all the holes from your cabinet in combination with a zero clearance insert, you kill the airflow in your system and probably nothing will happen. So you need holes in your cabinet to get the air flowing. And if you combine that with an air inlet from above, in most cases you increase the airflow even more. I wanted to create that the dust would be pulled or sucked inside the cabinet. So I made a lot of different designs and I don't want to show them all to you, but I want to tell you how I started. I started to make a zero clearance insert with a lot of holes. And this way I could easily uh, cover some holes and areas and make a cut and see what happens. And to analyze this, I recorded all these cuts and I simply looked what happened. And what I learned from this try and error method is that the holes at the right side, if your fence is at the right side, does not have any effect. It only has a disadvantage because the wood is sucked to those holes, so it only gives some friction. So forget holes at the right side. The most effective place is the other side, and unfortunately there is not much space. But for dust extraction, this is your most important area. The holes in the back have minimum effect, but you want to leave them open because, like I said, your system can't extract more air than the air it can extract. So to increase your air inlet, you increase your dust extraction. So with this information, I made a lot of different designs. And at the end, I ended up with this design. And this design was the most effective. So it was not just about making holes in your insert. The design certainly makes a difference. In my first video, I show this example to show the difference between the zero clearance insert as we know it and my how version. But here my overhead blade guard was in place and although it was not turned on, I wanted to show it to you in conditions most of us have to work with. I did my best, but it is harder to see than with the overhead blade guard in place because a lot more dust is coming to you with a normal zero clearance insert. Even if you look at the tabletop, you cannot see the amount of dust that blew over the tabletop. And keep in mind that these cuts, especially with plywood, are normally very nasty. 
the how insert has the most effect when you're cleaning up edges of the wood or you first cut some raw dimensions and later saw it in the right dimension but also then it is better in dust extraction so i really think it makes a big difference and everyone can benefit from this whole version of the zero clearance insert it just does a better job in dust extraction without any disadvantages so do i think it is the best zero clearance insert yes i do and that is till the moment someone get inspired to improve this version or create something else and share it with a woodworking community Although the benefits of the original zero clearance insert and the better dust extraction were the most important goals, I also hoped it would clean the inside of my cabinet saw better. And cleaning the inside of your cabinet is something different than creating a better dust extraction when you use it on your table saw. To clean up the inside of your cabinet, you need enough airflow so it can extract the dust. And normally your cabinet has some holes to cool your motor and to create this airflow. So you should not close these gaps. Leave them open. When you combine them with your how zero clearance insert, you increase the airflow even more and you get a more effective turbulence and dust extraction. But making more holes in your cabinet and zero clearance insert has also some consequences. When you make the air inlets too big, you probably create more air volume, which you lose air speed. So it has to be in balance with your system. For me to create the optimum air extraction in speed and volume, I ended up in closing the caps that are on the underside of my table saw. Your whole system of dust extractor, piping, uh, piping distance, piping size has influence on this. So I cannot tell if this is also the best solution for you. So just try and see what is the best balance in your system. So at the end, I still think everyone can benefit from this whole version of the zero clearance insert. Also, when you do not have a cabinet saw, I still think you can benefit from this insert. Next is the making of this whole version of the zero clearance insert. But I already want to thank you for watching. I hope you find it interesting. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. We start with measuring the width of the insert. Be sure you do not cut it too small. We find adjust it later with a sander or router. I use 18mm full colored black MDF. Most original inserts are a bit too small. So if you draw a copy, be sure you make it a little bit bigger than the original one. And again, stay on the outside of the line so we can send it to the right dimension so it can closely fit in your table saw. If you already have an insert that fits and you have a router table, of course, this will go a lot easier. If you did it right, the insert fits very tight in your table saw. So this is the moment to create a hole in it so we can easily get it out if it's stuck in your table saw. I use 80mm material and that is too thick, so we have to measure how much we have to remove to get it leveled with the tabletop. We only do it where the insert will be rest on the platforms. Because in my case the platforms are in the same line of each other, the easiest way is to cut out some material over the full length of the insert. And one way to do this is with your table saw. Thank you. 
Although I use a table saw blade with some flat teeth, I still have to clean it up a bit. I have a router table so I prefer to do it this way and that goes easier and with a nicer finish. The safest way to get our saw blade in the insert is to do it this way and I would not recommend to do it any other way. We have to cut some wood that fits in the end of our insert and the fine resolution of my T-ruler comes in handy. I made the insert a bit too high so we have to remove a little bit more material to get it at the right level. We want it a little bit under the table side top so that we can level it with screws at the underside. We draw the lines for the air inlets. Be sure you do not make the bridge between your saw blade and the air inlet too small. Otherwise this piece will start to vibrate when the saw blade is spinning and you lose the benefit of a zero clearance insert. I am drilling holes at the beginning and end of each air inlet. And we later have to connect these holes with your jigsaw or router table. If you do this with your router, you have to be careful that you always move your wood against the spinning direction of your router bit, otherwise it shoot out the router table. We finish the edges with our router, and although it's not necessary, I do this for a reason besides that I like it from a design point of view. Last thing I do is making slots in these inserts. They are as deep as the bevel I put at the outside of the insert. These slots are not necessary. I think it helps a little bit to release pressure when wood is gliding over the air inlets. But at the other hand, I like it from a design point of view. I like to make things a little bit different. I think it makes this insert more interesting on its own. <laughs>